Welcome to the Rakdos Burn Wrap Up. So for our first match with this deck, we went up against Black by Control, which I expected to be a hands-down, we would dominate matchup. And it turns out not so much. And it did the first match because he was he had a lot of dead cards, but he probably said words them out. I don't know what he said words them out for. Um, I made a few play errors. Um, in the second game, um, I decided to try and kill off Gideon as quickly as I could. I think that may have been a mistake. Um, although I think, um, I, though I was watching the when I was watching it when I was editing, I'm, I have a feeling that if I hadn't done that, um, I would have I would have just gotten beaten down with the Gideon. So I w went. I used Fiery Temper to the face to Gideon to, well, to the face, but I redirected to Gideon. If I had done that to the face, and then on the next turn, um, I had used uh, Avacyn's Judgment to, ki to finish killing Gideon off. If I instead had saved that and used Lightning Axe uh, during combat, if I used Lightning Axe on Gideon, wait. If I use Lightning Axe on the vents and then Addison's Judgment to the face, that would have been another four points. That would have been total uh, seven damage to the face. Um, Gideon would have been getting in. Um, and then it would have been a race. I, I think, I, I didn't actually count, but I think Gideon would have beat me the turn before I could have beaten him. Um, and in the last game, I even said on, during the video, um, my biggest mistake was that I should have, when I had the Shreds of Sanity, even though I didn't have an instant in my graveyard, uh, because he was at six, I should have grabbed the Alms of the Vein, and then he would be at three, and then all I would have to do was top deck another burn. If he had been at more life, the play that I did makes more sense, but because he was at exactly six, Alms of the Vein down to three, any burn, and I would have won, and I would have won that match. Uh, the other thing that I should have done, I made a note of it on my notes, is that I should have cyborged and called the bloodline. As soon as I knew he had Gideon, I should have, uh, between games two and three, and actually probably after the, the first cyborging too, because that deck always runs Gideon, call the bloodline would have given me chump blockers to block Gideon. Um, but I didn't think of that at all. Uh, or maybe I thought of it, but I didn't say anything about it. Um, no, I probably didn't think about it. I think I took out my, my only call the bloodline too, so obviously I wasn't thinking about that. But that would have been the correct play. If you're playing against Gideon, put in Call of the Bloodline, and then you have jump blockers. You're gaining one life instead of losing five every turn. So against Black-White uh, Control, we went to one, but it is one of the better matchups for this deck. You will probably beat Black-White Control most of the time, almost all the time, unless you make stupid errors like I did. The second match was against um, the new standard boogeyman, Azorius Spirit, or variation thereof. It wasn't pure spirit. He had a few other things. Um, we went two, sorry, we went one to two again. Um, but I, I think that last game, I got I got hit by some bad variants. Uh, so the first game, one of the things that I should have done uh, from the very beginning, I should have been burning his creatures. Um, I think that if I had been burning his creatures, because he was hitting for me for three every round, and I kept burning the face. If I had been burning his creatures from the get-go, um, I kind of did that in the last game, but the only reason I did that in the last game was because I had stuff that only hit creatures. I was basically using everything that went to the face to the face, because um, I had um, I had Twin Shot, and I had Galvani Bombardment. But the first game, if I had been burning his creatures, it would have lasted longer, and which would have allowed me to draw into stuff. Um, it's a little disconcerting that he was color screwed. He didn't get any white mana, and I still beat him. Although, uh, come to think of it, I think the only thing that he had in his deck that was that used white was um, was spell queller. So I don't think that that would have made too much of a difference. The second game, my opponent got mana screwed, and as soon as I burned two of his creatures, he just forfeited like straight off. Um, in the last game. Um, I think I played the last game really well. Like I said, I got mana screwed at the very beginning. I was missing land drops. And then later in the game, I got mana flooded, where I was drawing nothing but land. Um, 
one of the things about uh, playing online is that the randomizer is truly random. Whereas when you shuffle decks manually, there's actually a little bit of non-randomness. Like you actually stack your deck a little bit without realizing it. Um, and mathematicians have proved this over and over again that when you shuffle, almost ever, always, even if you shuffle seven times, like they say, you have to, you kind of have to do it the right way. Um, there's, there's a lot fewer, fewer instances like this when you're playing live. But at the very, very end, when I used Collective Defiance, I decided to use all three modes. And I don't know why you decided to use all three modes because good and the spell color minus two minus two didn't even matter. Um, so what I should have done is I should have played the Swamp and then did that because if I had done it that way, the Clash of Wills, I would have had, I only needed one more mana to get around Clash of Wills. And if I had played the land, I would have. I didn't even think about counting the lands until after I had done it. If I counted lands before, I would have realized if I played the land, I would have needed it. Um, but he says that he had other ways of dealing with it. So if I had the one more mana, I have a feeling that he would have done something else. Um, and that's why he took so long to, to do the upkeep. If you see, I cut the video where it's like, where I count the lands and then the, it's sky scrolls because that's, that's the passage of time. Count the lands again, sky scrolls again. It's like, if you've got a class of wills, I'm dead. Um, sky scrolls again, it's like, and then I started typing, I'm showing that we're waiting on you. Cause sometimes with, with X mage you get distinct. And even though you've passed, the client still thinks they're waiting for you Usually when that happens, you'll see your own timer. You'll see your own timer going down, even though you've passed and it says it's waiting for your opponent. That's how you know you're desynced. So um, I actually think this duck does okay versus um, Zarya Spirits. I think that given given the right draws and not getting flooded, um, I think that this deck, especially after sideboarding, really, really puts spirits, at least this version of Spirits, to the paces. I don't know about pure spirits. This is not really pure spirits. This is more spirit slash hybrid type thing. It's more of a draw go style deck in standard, which is a little annoying. Our third match was against Fever Burns, but I'm going to call it because it didn't use Sting in the Ice and it didn't use Storm Chaser Mage, at least not that I saw. Uh, it just seemed to be pure boom. Bo it just seemed to be pure burn with Fever Visions. In the first game, in the first game, I decided to save my uh, alchemist, knowing that he had burn, and hoping that he would uh, use up all his burn before before casting it. But I think that was a bad play. Uh, I think playing the thermal alchemist, forcing him to use his burn on my thermal alchemist, saves him from burning me to the face. Um, and if he doesn't have it, I get in free damage. And there was a point when I could have cast. Uh, Collective Brutality just to see how many burn cards he could have in his hand, and then I could kind of check them off mentally uh, as, as we went through. Um, in game two, I made a big error um, when he... In game two, there was a bit of an error where I had cast uh, Collective Brutality, discarded Alms of the Vein, and he chose to counter the Collective Brutality rather than the Alms of the Vein. Since Collective Brutality is a, a terrain of two and Alms of the Vein is a terrain of three, that's not what he was after. He did not want me to take a card from his hand. Um, and he had both a Exquisite Firecraft and a Negate still in hand. Well, he had, later on I saw both of those cast. So he drew, he may have drawn one of them. However, I could have cast another Collective Brutality right after discarding, um, discarding the, ther the Thermal Alchemist. And that would have been the better play. He was protecting his hand, casting the second collective brutality, would have gotten whatever it was that he was trying to protect, which is probably, I almost guarantee you that it was the exclusive, I almost guarantee you it was the exclusive firecraft that he was protecting. At the third game, I don't think I could have played that name differently. The third game, he just got an awesome draw. And I, even after mulliganing, my draw was so good. I probably could have mulliganed one more time at the very beginning, but it's hard to say. In the match versus Dimmer Zombies, we went 2-0. Given that I didn't make very many play mistakes, that's probably the reason. I did make one play mistake in the first game, however. Uh, at the very beginning of the game, when he cast Relentless Dead, I decided to use Collective Brutality to give it minus 2, minus 2. That was a mistake. My thinking at the time was to 
basically delay a turn, have it not attack, and so that when he, when he recast it, I would be basically saving a turn. Had I instead drained his life for two, I still would have been at 20 life when the relentless dead attacked, but he would have been at 18. And that would have get, put me a little bit closer to winning. In the end, it didn't matter because we still wound up winning that, that, that game. The second game, I didn't, I don't think I made any play errors. I think I played that hand pretty perfectly uh, given the hand that I had. Our opponent, however, made a couple grave errors. Uh, pun not intended, but appropriate. The first error that he made was that when he cast Collected Brutality on us, he decided to remove the R Collected Brutality rather than the, ten, rather than the Flaying Tendrils. Now, I don't know if he realized what Flaying Tendrils did, or if he had read it or anything, because if he had read it, he would have realized that that completely hoses his strategy. Additionally, I don't think he read any of the cards in my hand. I don't think he remembered them. Um, the very next turn, he played something that he knew I could remove easily. And then late in the game, just before he conceded, he played his Volden Tendr Volden. He played his Volden. He played his vampire. I don't remember the name of Volden something or other. The Eldrazi vampire. And if he would have remembered that I had another Galvanic Bombardment in hand, he might have held on to that and played it played a little bit differently. And then he went up scooping at 22 life when I had 18. Now yes, I was destroying his strategy. But I was pretty much burnt out. I was I had three cards in my hand that I couldn't really cast. I had three cards in my hand that required casting something to discard. And it was very, very easy that I could have been mana flooded. I think it was way too early to concede there, and it was possible to turn around. Maybe he just didn't want to play anymore. In the Mads versus Bant good stuff, I don't think I actually made a lot of errors. I went 0-2, but it was just a better deck. Had all the best stuff out of green, white, and blue. No real scene, just good stuff and a lot of value. And I think that's going to be the next evolution of Bant once Collective Company rotates. And that actually might have been what the deck was. I don't recall seeing any pre-rotation cards come to think of it. I did make a couple mistakes in each game. The first game, uh, I even said this during the video, that I wanted to cast... I had I even said this during the video, I had cast Alms of the Vein right away instead of hanging on to it just in case I got the Tormented Voice. And while I know that that strategy has burnt me in the past when playing against Black, because Black has Discard, in this scenario, hanging on to that in case I do a Tormented Voice would have been the right play. In the second game, I forgot that Lightning Axe was an instant, and I used, tried to use Lightning Axe on Spellcrawler right away and he used Archangel Addison in response. Had I waited until the next turn, he was probably going to cast Archangel Addison because he knew he could kill me next turn with Archangel Addison, uh, Sylvan Advocate, and Spellcrawler for, for exactly 10 points of damage. I would have been able to Lightning Axe probably the Sylvan Advocate. Overall, I'd give this deck four out of five stars. For a $10 deck, it's got a lot of value, a lot of playability and it'll probably win you quite a few games at your local FNM. If you've enjoyed this series, please subscribe so you're updated on all the videos that, that I release. The next video I think I do is going to be the Ex Esper Exile deck that we saw when I was playing Angels. That deck has a lot of potential, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to play. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.